an empty bank. Very scary when we're trying to prepare a presentation, write a document, or even a simple email. But it doesn't have to be that way. There are actually many techniques that we can use to address an empty page. Over my life, professional and personal, I've learned some techniques that have helped me address the empty page. And I can assure you that if you use these techniques, you will eventually not just lose the anxiety of the empty page, you will also be faster approaching your documents and have more consistency and professionalism. When I share these techniques with you, I want you to think, how can you use those techniques on your personal life? I've organized them from more accessible to least accessible for things that you will have to plan for, things that you can start using right now, and things that you will have to probably include in your training plan. So we start. Yeah. The first question that comes to mind is, why an empty page? And that's where templates come to mind. We should rarely ever start with an empty page. Most of the writing that we do, let's face it, is not creative writing. We're trying to communicate information to someone else, and we want that information to be very, very clear, very concise, and very consistent. That's what a template allows us to do. There are many different sources of templates. You can find them on the internet. You can actually get, when you see a great document, you can just remove everything that is particular to that document and just leave the skeleton. The same with emails. It will save you so much time, especially with emails. How many times do you spend looking at the email and how do I want to say this? I know that I already presented similar information at a different time. So try to start creating your template library and it, you will look more professional and your readers will be happy. The information will be always in the same place where they expect it to be. But what if you don't even know what you want to say? You're just exploring ideas. You're trying to organize a presentation. You're trying to uh, do a document where you're trying to sell something. Where do you start? For that, I like to use mind mapping software. With mind mapping software, you can start throwing in ideas, organizing them, reorganizing them, follow them in a non-linear way. And most important, you can do it at different levels of abstraction. Here we have the same mind map, one collapsed, where this presentation, for example, has 179 nodes. This, each one of these is a node. And 81 links to external resources. When I'm thinking about, when I was thinking about this presentation, I could focus on single areas. And if an idea came that fit somewhere else, I could just plug it in somewhere else. At the end, I got a perfectly organized presentation that, that, that was very, very easy to follow. Up to now, I've mentioned techniques that you can just use without any help. But let's not leave training out of the equation. Training is very, very important. There are many different courses and, and training that you can use to gather techniques. One of the most important training or courses that I've taken is called information mapping. And I cannot share this module with you because it's licensed and only people that are licensed can use it. But this information mapping helps you organize the information in little chunks, in little blocks. It gives you templates, back to the templates, on how to organize these documents. It define what kind of document are you trying to do. Are you trying to convince someone of do, uh, to do something? Are you just trying to present information? Are you giving directives, like a process or procedure? Uh, going through information mapping, all those things, you don't even have to worry about. I go to the index and say, hey, what blocks do I need for this kind of presentation, or for this kind of document, or for this kind of email? 
and I just put them together and documents that before would have taken me three days to prepare, now I can do in one or two hours. Another training that I've taken is for my consulting, uh, my consulting skills. This is very particular training. And I am sure that there is a writing techniques for PR, for, in, for sales, for technical writers. Whatever your area of expertise is, I am sure that there is a course that will help you uh, define your documents, that will allow you to uh, write things that are very, very efficient for your audience. One of the things that I learned about in this effective communication for a consultant was a technique called IOGBA that you will recognize right now. You first start by telling people what are you going to talk about? What is the issue that you are trying to address? First, then, what are you going to propose? Third, why should the people be listening to you? What do you have that you can offer them? Then, what's in it for you? What's in it for the reader? After that, what action you want the listeners or the reader to take? And finally, what are you going to, how are you going to proceed? With a technique like this, you allow the listener or the reader to focus on the content and not be guessing what's coming, what's next. As I said, I've used those techniques very, very successful. So, by now, it's almost time. I hope that you've learned at, at least some of these techniques and that you will use them in your personal life. And that will allow you to tackle the empty page right on.